Hi there. In this video, we're going to review all the recent changes to the Naxport interface. The first thing that you'll probably notice is that the colour scheme and icons have changed. Although the tools themselves are practically the same, you're going to see big changes in the main menu, template creation, registering, timeline and presentation environments. From the main menu, the biggest change is that you can now have direct access to each environment through this customizable panel. Select your most used tools and fix them here to open them quickly. For example, here we're going to remove the register without video source link and replace it with the new button template link. From the menu at the top, we access the main menu options, deactivate the ones we are not interested in and activate our favourites. The license, activation and deactivation options can also be found in this menu. They can be found here in the bottom left. Within the new button template environment, the first change that you'll see is that the template is now completely blank, without any buttons on it. In addition, all the icons that were previously at the top are now on the left hand side. From the home icon, we can access different tools such as equalize, search and replace, graphic descriptors, data matrices and dashboards. New buttons can also be created from here. Category buttons can also be created by double clicking, while holding control plus double click creates a descriptor button. This is the same as always, but the way we edit buttons has changed. To start with, you'll see some options above the buttons themselves. These allow you to clone or lock the button so it can't be edited. It can also be deleted from here. The options for the appearance and behaviour of buttons remain the same, though they are now a little better organised. Within the behaviour options there are two main changes, related to exclusions and descriptor blocking. These options are now found at the bottom of the behaviour window, from the Exclude Buttons drop-down if working with manual categories, or from the Block Descriptors drop-down. The other options here are for links and editing groups. Going back to the side menu, here we can work with groups, either creating or editing them. There are also options to change the background of the template, panel flows, and a new template overview tool. You'll also see that a new icon has appeared, the information icon. From here, we can see how many categories, descriptors, and inactive buttons there are in our template. You can also see the size of the window itself. This info was previously displayed at the bottom of the template. Moving on to the registering environment. The biggest change you'll notice is that the register control window has been replaced by this much larger toolbar, which includes some new options. To review the actions we have registered, we can use the play-by-play -play table, available in the first icon in the toolbar. From here, you can see all the registered actions, more or less like in the register control window previously, although here we have access to descriptors, notes and a few extra options which will be covered in later videos. Another option available here is the dynamic timeline. Click on this icon. From here we can access a timeline which will be filled as we register our actions. For example, if I click on a new attack this will be saved on the timeline at that exact moment, like this. This also allows us to edit our clips as we register them, either moving them or changing the start and the end time. Apart from this, there are no other changes to this environment. To access the main timeline, we click, as always, on the last icon in the toolbar. There are more big changes in the timeline. When accessing the timeline, you'll see that there are fewer icons in the toolbar. Although all the tools are still there, they are hidden. Now you can customise the timeline to include only the tools that you commonly use. On the right side, we can configure our timeline profile. Clicking on the last icon opens a window from where we can select the tools we want to include. 
To do this, double click on the tool you want to add to the toolbar or drag it into position. Another option is the one to modify the style of the timeline. This alters how information is seen on the timeline itself, either by selecting a different colour scheme or by changing the size of the tracks. From the profile creation window, you'll be able to create a completely new profile. You may, for example, have a profile focused on the analysis of pure data for the filtering tool, or another which concentrates on editing the video or drawing tool. Other options for customising the timeline are in different menus. All these tracks or sections of information are now customisable. Change their size to fit your needs by dragging them one by one. There are also different timeline tools available. You have direct access to these from the bottom left. You can also navigate between them by holding CTRL and pressing T. Another thing to take note of in the timeline is that the way that you navigate between different analyses has changed. Now, when we add a second analysis to the timeline, we select the game we want to work on from the drop-down menus on the left. And on the right, we can change the analysis of the same video. If, for example, we had an attack analysis, defense analysis, individual player analysis, etc. Most of the timeline tools remain the same, apart from some aesthetic changes. If we open the data matrix, for example, you can see that it looks pretty much the same as always, although there is a change in how you access custom matrixes. You can now see a switch in the upper right corner. You'll encounter this switch in various parts of the interface, and it simply enables extra options. A tool that has changed quite a lot is the search function. This now has a new internal logic, which will allow us to search more databases much faster. When adding info to the search tool, you can see that the interface itself has changed. In this case, we're going to search through a total of 10,000 clips. We simply select what we want to search for and continue the filtering process. Bear in mind that it's possible for this new search tool to return zero results. In this case, we're filtering for actions that happened in the first half, but we've also added actions for the second half. The result here will always be zero, as this action cannot happen in both halves at the same time. Let's move to the presentation environment and see the changes that have occurred there. Again, in the presentation environment, you'll see that there are less icons in the top bar. This is because presentations are now split between basic and advanced modes. In basic mode, we only have the options to export video or upload to sharing. Activating advanced mode will show all the tools that were available previously, such as the export and import options or the filtering tools. Apart from this, the presentation environment is practically the same. To edit a clip, we enter the Properties window, where the main change is that everything is now divided into tabs in the top right, instead of having all the info directly in the window. As with the timeline, if you're working with several presentations at the same time, you can access them from the drop-down menu at the top. Another big change is how we actually show the presentation from Naxport. To enter presentation mode, we now have to activate this switch at the top. This takes us directly to the presentation environment. From here, we can also modify the different viewing options, allowing us to display the presentation in the most comfortable way possible. The options window has also changed. Now, it's no longer a drop-down menu but appears in a side window instead. To get back to the timeline, we simply click the presentation mode switch again.